What's up? I'm Aaron from Nomadic Sound, and you're watching part two of the Songwriter's Next Steps project. In this four-part series, I help Australian pop artist Danzi take her new song, Letting You Go, through the entire production process of arranging, recording, and mixing, all the way through to releasing the song. If you have any questions along the way, hit us up in the comments and let us know which part of this process you'd like to know more about. In the last video, we talked about some important first steps when taking part in any musical collaboration, as well as hiring a producer. And then we went on to record the foundation of the song. In this case, it was a guitar and a vocal scratch track. Today, I'll be showing you how I've arranged and mixed the song. So let's jump right into it. We're starting with a guitar track and a vocal track that sounds something like this. Letting you know I'm letting you go, letting you go. I do have somewhat of a process that I follow when I work on arranging a song, though every song is different. So in this particular case, I started with some piano tracks. Letting you know I'm letting you go. I then listened to one of the reference tracks Dan sent me and got my piano sounding a little closer to that track. I wanted to add just a little more space to this, so I found a cool synth sound and made a little bit of a melody to sit in the back. Letting you know, letting you go, letting you go. It's hard to even okay, so now I've got a bit of a spacey intro, and I want it to change just a little bit once we get to the verse. I want that vocal sitting right on top, and I want you to kind of nod your head a little bit to the beat. So I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of percussion. It's hard to even begin this, never was my intention. Tick tock, tick tock, just on the left side. I didn't want it right in the center, I didn't want to muddy up the vocal at all. I've got this violin track here. I've got a little tick tock happening. And I've got another synth. Notice how the violins on the left, the tick tock is somewhere here. And then that other synth is just to my right a little bit. And that leaves space for the vocal right in the middle. And then when I add that original piano back, it's hard to even begin this. And that original synth. Never was my intention. And I'm scared that when you listen, you'll find flaws in my contention. That sounds pretty good to me. So that's gonna be our first verse for now. So we're coming up to the first pre-chorus and I want it to start getting a little more exciting. So far, our intro and first verse are sounding, uh, I guess, quite emotional, quite mellow. I wanted to start picking up. One thing that I go to is this sample I made a long time ago called the kickoff, and it's just a big low-end rumble, a kick drum with a whole bunch of reverb and a big tail, and it sounds like this. Way that I've been recently, it built me up just to tear me down, it's taking its- Okay, cool. So that is the start of the pre-chorus. Also, we're going to have to change it up a little bit. We want to make it a little more exciting. Uh, my go-to thought here was just a little more percussion, like quite ambient still. We don't want anything in your face. That's going to be the chorus. Uh, so what I went with was some snare rolling, like some springs of a snare. At this point, I'm going to mute the vocal just once in a while so you can hear more of the song and the arrangement. And I'll keep the vocal coming back in once in a while just so we don't lose focus of what we're doing. So here's what this next part sounds like. You'll notice that the percussion from the first verse stops. That's the little click on the left channel. And we have the rolling snares come in. And it sounds like this. Okay, cool. We're starting to change the dynamic a little bit in the pre-chorus, but I want to add even more to this pre-chorus to make it a little more exciting. So I threw a cello in and that sounds like this. So we've got a pretty cool sound now for the pre-chorus, but I had this idea that came to me. I really wanted a voice in the background, just something like very distant, but I really felt it could use this. So I just sang over top of it and hopefully Danzy will like this. And if she doesn't, maybe she can sing it herself over top or maybe she digs it or maybe she doesn't want it at all. Anyways, here's what I did. Cool. Now, to me, that sounds like a really exciting pre-chorus. 
Now what I want to do is accentuate that second half of the pre-chorus. It needs to start off as a pre-chorus, pretty exciting, and then go higher, 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 more exciting, more energetic, and then slam them with the chorus. So what I've done to get the second half of this pre-chorus to uh, increase in excitement is I've added three more things. Um, one is like this airy sound. I've got another snare roll happening. Uh, I've got in brackets here, trappy, very nice. It's a little trappier. Dan wants some trappy sounds. I think this is a bit trappier. Uh, and then this hat synth, which is just like a bit of a roll on the hi-hats. Um, and I'll play just those. So let's listen to the whole pre-chorus now. You build me up just to tear me down. It's taking its toll and I don't want you around. Just to bring me down, bring me down. And I know that you don't mean it, but that don't mean it hurts me less. So I guess I'm trying to find the worst. Did you hear what happened at the very end there? On the last beat, all of the instruments stopped and we just let Dan's voice go. This is huge for dynamics. Um, if I just let it play all the way through, the next downbeat of the kick drum would come in on the first beat of the chorus and it would like, it will flow. But one of my favorite things to do is to take all of the energy away by cutting out all of that, just having the vocal sit right up front for one beat and that kind of, it quiets down and then you explode the chorus. I'm just gonna tuck all of these tracks away so that we're not confused and we can just focus on the chorus. Most of the time when I get to a chorus in a pop song like this, the first thing I wanna start with is a drum pattern. So I found some drum sounds that I like. Usually I'll just start with a kick and a snare, maybe. That's what I did in this case. Uh, and I find a rhythm by, I don't know, like beatboxing to myself or tapping on the desk or something. I just find a rhythm that's gonna sound nice with it. So I found this kick and snare sample and I'll just play it with the guitar here. We'll listen to a bit of the pre-chorus and then into my kick snare pattern. And I know that you don't mean It's not too intense at this point. That's a big round kick and the snare is, I don't know, a little bit tame, kind of snappy, uh, a bit trappy, but I want a little more excitement with this. So I'm going to start with a bit of a hi-hat pattern. And here's what I came up with for a hi-hat pattern. For this arrangement, I keep going back in my head to when Dan told me she wanted this to sound a little bit trappy, especially in the percussive department. So I found uh, a bit of a stutter hat effect. You guys have heard this in trap music before. I know you have. You can see these two hats here are what are stuttering. So they sound like this. It's super minimal. I think that's all it needs though. I don't need to go too aggressive with the stutter or I'm gonna overdo it. So now I have a percussion section going into the chorus. And for me, the next thing I like to add is bass. So listening to the reference tracks again, I found that a few of the songs have this very wavy bass going on. Um, I'll show you what I mean. This is what I've come up with using Massive. That sounds pretty nice with the guitar, but based on this pre-chorus we've just come up with, I want this to be a little more aggressive not so pretty. So here's what I've done. This is a synth preset I found using Massive again. Uh, and I'm gonna mute that guitar track because at this point it's not working so well. Here's this like fuzzy synth. Can you hear how the drums are kind of getting lost now? Uh, they still sound nice, but I want a little bit more oomph to them. So for the kick drum, I've added this room sound. It's very subtle, but I think it helps cut through a little more. So listen to this, original. And then with the, uh, the room sound. If I turn it up, you can kind of hear. A little more room. Okay. And then for the snare, same thing. This is another snare sample. And I've just got a bit of reverb on it to help it sit in the back, but just give us a nice room sound. So I'll go without and then I'll bring in the room sound. Yeah, you can hear that. 
Uh, so now let's listen with the bass and the fuzzy synth again. Cool, I think they're sitting up front uh, again. It's sounding nice. Another thing I like to do to build dynamic quickly is change the drum patterns to a double time or half time, meaning they just speed up twice as fast or slow down to half the pace. Uh, so here on the second half of the chorus, well, right in the middle, I guess, I've done that. So I wanted it to feel like it picks up, but I don't want to just make it pick up right away. I'm going to slow it down and then speed it back up with more. So I've got my original drum pattern here going throughout the first half of the chorus and then right in the middle, it slows down to half time. I'll show you what that pattern sounds like in just one sec, but it just slows down for a little bit and then it jumps back into the regular speed. But at the same time, I'm gonna throw in the shaker, the amazing shaker. This is the biggest dynamic builder ever. You're gonna hear this in so many choruses, uh, verse everywhere. You're gonna hear it all over all kinds of genres. Uh, it just makes the song sometimes, you know? So check it out. We're going to go regular speed. We're going to slow it down and then just come back to normal speed. But we're going to throw that shaker in and listen to what this does. Okay, so we've made it to the second verse now. And just for the sake of continuity, I'm gonna start off by bringing back that original piano sound that was in the first verse. Keep it sounding a little bit similar. Uh, but I don't want the, the whole first verse to be there. I want to have elements of the first verse, but we've just had this big banging chorus. I don't want the dynamic to drop too much. So I'm gonna leave that kick and snare pattern in, something similar. Uh, I'm going to use a bit of a, a less intense sounding kick drum because that was the chorus kick drum, the big heavy one. I don't need this second verse to be big and heavy like that. Also in the chorus, we introduced that big gliding bass. Um, so there's going to need to be some kind of bass element in this second verse. Otherwise, it's going to sound super empty. Uh, and keeping that trap vibe in mind again, I'm going to take an 808 bass and make that sound pretty underneath all of this. So. I've got my 808 bass, my original piano from the first verse, and I've got a different kick sound. This is the kick two verse, just a little less intense. So we've got all of these familiar aspects from previous points in the song, plus we've got an 808 bass, which is a little bit different, but really fitting for this second verse. You'll notice that shaker's gone because that was way too intense, too amazing. I can't have that through the whole song or it's gonna lose some of its awesomeness. We'll bring it back later, don't worry. So at this point, all I've done to keep the structure of the song intact is a bunch of copy and pasting. Uh, this isn't exactly how I want the song to sound in the end. I do want it to change a little bit throughout uh, from part to part. However, for now, uh, just to get everything in place and sounding cohesive, uh, I've copied and pasted and I've got everything done because the song is just the intro, the verse, verses, uh, pre-chorus and chorus. And then there's one more part and that's the bridge. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. Uh, the bridge, I wanted to really break down because in this vocal scratch take, super emotional, massive vocals. Um, and I just wanted it to be huge and exciting and very emotional. Uh, so for me, emotion strings. I put a lot of strings in here. I'll show you what I've done. I'm going to mute that vocal channel for now. It's such a crazy, good, intense part. I don't want to give too much away in this. I want you guys to hear the song for the first time with the proper mix. So uh, we're not going to listen to that right now. I'll just show you what I've done here. Uh, I've taken elements from the pre-chorus. So I've got my rolling snares here. I've got that big kickoff that I'm just addicted to, I guess. I've got our cello line. I'll show you what that's like. breakdown it's broken down quite a bit uh and then i wanted something else of this and i went to another cello just to add some i don't know what i was going for here but it kind of gave me this like game of thrones vibe you can see got anyways this is what it sounds like i don't know why i get game of thrones i get game of thrones So there's two kickoffs. This first one is just completely breaking down. And then on the second kick, it's going to start building up again. So I've just taken our pre-chorus from before and kept all of this new stuff intact. So we've got that 
back vocal again, that airy synth sound, the hi-hats, uh, some piano. And then the familiar pre-chorus. And then one last bit of excitement to build it up before we hit the chorus. And listen to that violin. I think originally I had tried to cut everything for that last beat, but on this last chorus, uh, I decided against it. It sounded better just flowing right into it. Um, then we hit that last chorus and Bob's your uncle. That was it. I should point out that throughout this entire process of arranging this, I had sent Dan some clips to make sure that she was happy with the direction I was going in. And uh, I think she liked what I was doing. So that's everything in place now. We've got some verses, choruses. We've got that lovely breakdown with our funky Game of Thrones cello. Everything's sounding good. And I think I'd be happy to show this to Dan now and see what she thinks so that we can move into a vocal session, which I'm super stoked to do. If you guys have any questions about anything I was doing in that session, please ask me. Or if you heard a sound that you like, uh, you want to know how to make it, I'm happy to share. I wish I had an exact process for you, but the truth is every song is different. Uh, musicians want different sounds, different vibes, and it's always a new experience. I learn things basically with every musician I work with. Um, so many people have these sounds that they want. Sometimes I need to do some digging, experimenting, researching. Um, yeah, it's a learning process every time. So next up, I'm going to send this to Dan. Maybe I need to make some tweaks. Maybe she's just happy with it and we can get on to the vocal session. That's going to happen very soon. So we'll see you in the next video and we'll do a vocal session. Cheers.